The grid and snap modes have to do with how the items you move behave. Now the items will move according to the grid value, which let's set up now. Go to the LCD and click on custom. It's, it is right underneath the time signature, so it's that 16. So they move according to our division and the snap mode. Let's start with the division. So the division forms the basis of the grid and it determines the length and placement operations for certain actions, such as moving a region or editing. And we will have a look at all these actions in a bit. Now our grid is these lines here that help you align regions or automation points, for example. And if for some reason you don't want them showing, you can go to view and then deselect background grid lines and it will go away. That will remove the lines, but your playhead and every other action, such as moving the, the regions, will still follow the snap mode and the division we set. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so as you can see, my time signature is 4-4, four, four, and my division by default is set to, six, to a 16th node. Now, its number on the ruler is one bar of 4-4, four, four, and its line is a quarter node. So if I zoom in further, you can see that more lines are added. So each one of these lines is a 16th node, and that is because I have set my division to 16. If I set it to four, for example, which is a quarter node, then it will only display four lines for its bar, and each one will be a quarter node. If I want eight nodes, I just set it to eight. So each one of these is an eighth node. You also get values for triplets. Uh, let's select six. So four, four time signature and six that subdivision will give us a quarter node triplets. And as you can see, it's not symmetrical. And we can go all the way up to 192. So let's go back to 16. Now either select a region and press E, echo, or double click on the region to bring up the editors. So as you can see here, we also get a grid. And that follows the division we have set on the LCD screen. So if I put it on 64, you can see more lines are added. If I go back to 16, it follows. You cannot set a different division for new windows. Each window will follow the division we have set on the LCD screen. So press E to go back. And now let's look at snap. As I have already mentioned, the lines here in the grid help us align regions, automation points, and other items based on the division and the snap we have set. So whenever we perform any of the actions, such as moving the playhead or moving a region, resizing a region, or adjusting the cycle, moving automation points, and of course editing. Whenever we perform any of these actions, the items will move according to what we have our, our snap to. So by default, the snap is set to smart. And for most of the things you do, this will work fine. I rarely have to change it to something else. But let's look at each one in detail. So the default one, smart, will snap to the nearest bar or bit. And that depends on the division and the current zoom level. So let's go back and let's move this one. So as you can see right now, it follows the division and it moves by 16th nodes. If I zoom in, you can see we can move in much finer detail than 16th nodes. Let's go back. The next one, bar, as the name suggests, will snap to the nearest bar. So if I move a region, it will move by one bar. It will snap to a bar. Now the next one, bit, will snap to the bits of the bar. So let's move that region again, and as you can see, it snaps to the quarter notes. Now don't get confused with this one, even though if I zoom in and I add more lines, so 16th notes, it will still snap to the bit. If I want to follow my division, 
that's the next one actually. And let's say that I want to move this region by 8th notes. I set it to 8 and then move by whatever my division is. Next one, ticks. This will snap to the nearest clock tick. And this can be quite surgical. Each bit actually let me highlight it so you can see exactly what I mean. So that's one bit. Each bit will have 960 ticks or points where you can snap. So the whole bar, so all of that, will have 3840 ticks. So that's 3840 points where you can move your region, edit it or place your playhead. And let's check it. And as you can see, I can move quite freely. Now the next two options, frames and quarter frames, are great when you are working with moving image. So if you import a video and you want your playhead to snap to the exact frame on the video, and that will happen more often than you think, these are the snap modes to use. Very helpful for media composers. And lastly, samples. That is similar to ticks and can be quite, quite surgical as well. But instead of snapping to the tick of the beat, it will snap the nearest audio sample. Now let's look at something that a lot will find frustrating at first when they start using Logic Pro. So if I open the snap menu, you can see that we have the options snap regions to absolute value and snap regions to relative value. So by default, the snap function will be in relative. Now when you move or edit something, it will retain the same relative distance from its original grid. Now let's look at an example. Let me set it up first. Let's do bar. Actually, let's do bit. Okay, and then set on bar. Now, when I try to move this, it maintains its relative distance. So as you can see, it was on the last bit of the bar. If I move it by one bar, it will snap to the last bit of the next bar. And that's quite helpful. Let's say you are recording a guitar, for example, and you start from the last bit of the previous bar. And if you copy it, it will snap exactly where you want it and it won't mess up the timing. Now, if you want to be absolutely dead on the grid and not maintain the relative distance, then you can select the other option, snap regions to absolute value. So that will snap to absolute values. In our case, the first bit of the bar. Now the rest of the options here, let's go back. The rest of the options, this we will have a look at the editing video and this we will have a look at the automation video. The last thing I want us to take a look is how to override the snap and move freely. So when I put my mouse on the snap area, you can see that this on off button appears. So if I switch it off, I can freely move the regions. I suggest that you, all this, you, you always leave this on, never turn it off, as long as you're working with something musical, and simply use the shortcuts to temporarily deactivate the snap. So there are two ways of doing that. Let's go back, for example, to division. So the first way is to hold down control and drag the item. Now, something very important, you select the region first by clicking on it and holding the click, and then you press ho and hold control. And now I can move freely. If you uh, press control first and then click, that's simply a right click and it will bring up the options. It can be quite annoying at first. Now, but as you can see here, ah, there, I did it again. So right now, it does move freely, but it it's still going relative to my division. If I zoom in, I can move with finer detail. Unless I have it on smart, then it doesn't matter where I am, it moves following the ticks. 
Another method that works on any snap mode, let's choose bar for example, which is the most obvious one, is to hold Control Shift. So I choose it, I hold Shift and Control, and then I can move it freely. Now in wider zoom levels, our edit will snap to ticks, and at higher zoom levels, our editing will snap to samples.